It's an event 50 years in the making. Pride and excellence, and I think that's why the school is so special. How Columbia River High School is celebrating an historic birthday. Plus, the teacher isn't speaking English. The kids don't speak Chinese. Why overcoming the language barrier may be the key to these kids' future. And find out how long it took to get a school's new artwork up on the walls and what it took to put it there. Hello and welcome to In The Know, I'm Chad Young. Schools are an integral part of our community. We often associate certain parts of town with its neighborhood schools. And few in Vancouver are more beloved than Columbia River. Nick Vole shows us why as River celebrates its 50th birthday. Ready, one, two, three. It's like herding cats for a photographer as he tries to convince the student body to form the letters CRHS at the 50 yard line. 50 is a big number at Columbia River High School as it celebrates half a century this year. Built in 1962, River has seen a lot of changes throughout the years, but one thing has remained the same. Once a chieftain, always a chieftain. I guess there's that saying here at Columbia River. These students are relatively new to being chieftains, but that's not the case for Michelle Buss. I've been a chieftain since I was a baby. Michelle's dad, Jim Chapman, was a teacher at Columbia River. My dad started teaching here in 1970, and I was born in 1970. She remembers running up and down the halls. Uh, I was also a cheerleader when I was four. Um, the wrestling um, cheerleaders at the time made me a, a cheerleading outfit. So that was my only time being a cheerleader in my life, but it, it was really fun. Michelle graduated from River in 1988. Now, Michelle is a teacher there and the track coach. Her dad is still around coaching tennis and Michelle still uses what he taught her every day. Having high expectations of the students and, you know, modeling what excellence really is. Sophomore Abby Bennett is also a second generation chieftain, joining her mom and dad. I don't know, it's just kind of cool to be like in the same school that they were in like, how many years ago? <laughs> a few. A few years ago. <laughs> her father, Dave Bennett, graduated from River in 1983. And now, as a teacher at River, Dave is seeing something remarkable. I can think of a lot of staff who currently teach here, who were students here, uh, a lot of students who have come through in the last five years that I've been here, whose uh, parents I went to school with and their parents went to school with. And that's, you know, something special about this school. At River, it seems to boil down to just one word. It like, feels a lot like a family. It, it means family to me. It does feel like family. So if you think of the school that way, as a family, these students crowding together on the field aren't just spelling out the name of their school. They're posing for the largest family portrait of their lives. We have a saying here, and it's, and it's true, because even after you leave River, uh, once a chieftain, always a chieftain. For In the Know, I'm Nick Vole. The school has a number of activities planned throughout the year, including a Hall of Fame induction ceremony for important alumni during the basketball season. River isn't the only school celebrating an anniversary this year. Alki Middle School, Roosevelt Elementary, and Chinook Elementary all turn 10 this year. Each school will observe the anniversary in its own way. Last year, Washington Elementary turned a whopping 100 years old. A Columbia River senior earns a huge national honor, and there might be more in his future. Stephen McCarthy has been named a semifinalist in the National Merit Scholarship Program. It's one of the biggest honors a high school student can get. He's one of a few thousand students from around the nation. If he makes the next round, he'll be up for college scholarship money. Stephen plans to attend Concordia University, Irvine, next fall. Eisenhower Elementary School is the only school from Southwest Washington to earn a government recognition. Eisenhower was named a reward school by the Department of Education, which means it's one of the most improved in the state. Eisenhower students scored in the top 10% of Title I schools in state testing among all students. 
Staff members say they did it by working together to improve teaching methods. It's a dedicated staff. I know that sounds really cliche, but we all love what we do. We all care about the kids. They all have different ways of teaching students, but it all comes together for the improvement of what we're supposed to do, and that helps students learn. Teachers also put an emphasis on student engagement. I can talk all day long I want, but unless they've got that internal motivation, they're not going to get that enrichment. So we're sort of guiding them to find answers for themselves and take it a little bit deeper. I think schools can achieve, but to maintain that achievement, it, it communicates to us as a staff that what we're doing is working. Teachers across the district meet regularly for what are called professional learning communities, or PLCs, and talk about teaching strategies. At Eisenhower, they say that these PLCs have really made a difference. The green team at Sacagawea Elementary School is at it again. The school has been selected to host a solar electric demonstration project. A similar project is already up at Columbia River High School. Sacagawea was selected by the Bonneville Environmental Foundation for the honor. There are still a number of steps to go, but eventually the school will pump electricity back into the power grid through a solar panel. Sometimes, like in computer classes, teachers are instructing kids on how to use technology. Other times, the technology changes how they approach traditional subjects. Our We Learn correspondent, Mark Ray, shows us how two teachers at Chinook Elementary used multimedia to transform a social studies project. On the surface, the project dreamed up by two teachers at Chinook Elementary seemed pretty straightforward. Students had to decide whether or not to remove dams from the Snake River to protect salmon populations. But under the surface, there lurked a lot of extra learning. They're teaching themselves to be their own learners. Mm -hmm. Alicia Cast and Erica Anderson teach fourth grade at Chinook Elementary. Their river dam project is part of a mandated curriculum, but they took it beyond the requirements. First, students study the lay of the land. Um, it helped me know where the dams were, and I was really surprised of how many there actually were in Washington. Then, using a number of resources, they research what removing the dams would mean for farmers, for businesses, and for those concerned about the sustainability of salmon populations. Students work in groups to debate the issues. Working with a group helped me understand the research by letting me see other people's perspectives and to compare it to mine so I can include everyone. They take that and they come up with their own position on the issue and um, that's how we kind of reach that higher level of thinking with them. Finally, using the school's computer lab, they make multimedia presentations to argue their position on the issue. The final projects include music, video, graphics, and text. I liked it because we could add mu music and effects to make it more interesting, and it's a lot better than just reading it aloud. The technology helps connect the dots between research, analysis, and self-expression. It engages them in their learning, and they, make, they become more attached to what they're learning, and it becomes their own rather than what just the teacher tells them they need to learn. Projects like this one break the mold of traditional instruction. To be able to prepare our students for um, what they will be facing in their future, we really need to be getting this technology into the schools, having the students work with it. For their efforts with this project, Erica and Alicia were finalists in a competition sponsored by Microsoft. They didn't win, but they did get to spend time in Seattle this summer with some of the country's other top educators. For In the Know, I'm Mark Ray. Thanks, Mark. Don't forget, on November 8th, you can see all kinds of classroom technology in action at the third annual We Learn Technology Showcase. Held at Skyview High School, the event is full of students and teachers demonstrating how they're using computers, iPads, iPods, robots, and other technology to improve learning. The event starts at 6.30 p.m. and is free. Make sure you put it on your calendar. The area's newest school, Vancouver iTech Preparatory, gets some recognition from a U.S. Senator. In a statement, Senator Maria Cantwell pointed to iTech Prep as an example of how schools can work with industry to improve STEM education. STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math, which is the focus at iTech Prep. In an article published in The Columbian and elsewhere, Senator Cantwell said that schools like iTech Prep can serve as a model to be replicated elsewhere in our country. When it comes to a foreign language, research shows that the younger kids are when they start learning, the easier it will be for them to pick it up. 
So at Franklin Elementary, they've got kids learning Mandarin Chinese, starting in kindergarten. Xin Shen Li's kindergartners are brand new to school and brand new to Mandarin Chinese. I only speak English. As part of an immersion program, 90% of Miss Li's lessons come in Chinese, even if students don't quite get it yet. I just need a patience to wait for them to, you know, to understand from my uh, all the gestures, my facial. Just a few days in, they're already learning. Look at you in the house. It's the only thing I know. Shisha means thank you, and then Nihao means hi. Franklin Elementary principal Laura Dilly says young children pick up language quickly. Two things are happening. They're learning their academics and learning a language at the same time. A language, Chinese, that is rapidly becoming more valuable in the global economy. So as we build a relationship as countries, uh, the opportunities will build for the, for the kids that can speak the Mandarin as well. So this Chinese Emerging Program um, not only teach them uh, language, uh, but also um, we introduce Chinese culture to them. This is the fourth year of Chinese immersion at Franklin, and it's woven into the fabric of the school. The students throughout Franklin are learning about Chinese culture. But also, the kids in the Mandarin program, we celebrate many other kinds of things that are uh, more American traditions or celebrations. And so we're getting a combination of both for all of the kids. Each year, the students progress through Franklin. More English will be incorporated into the curriculum. By the time they move into middle school, they'll be able to read, write, and speak Mandarin on top of all the other subjects they're learning. It's a testimony to the program, to these hard-working teachers. They're so dedicated, and we're getting excellent results from these kids. In addition to the Chinese Immersion Program at Franklin, Harney Elementary School offers Spanish Immersion. Over at Sarah J. Anderson Elementary, they offer Spanish Dual Language Program. A grant from CenturyLink will keep kids full over the weekend. The phone company granted $86,000 to the SHARE program, which sends home backpacks full of foods on Friday afternoons for families in need. The backpacks are distributed at schools with family community resource centers, which are usually in the most impoverished areas of town. CenturyLink employees raised $23,000, and the company chipped in the rest. Speaking of food, Beach's Restaurant came through for the Foundation for Vancouver Public Schools. Its annual summertime cruising event raised $25,000. The annual car show mixes food and music into a community get-together. The money will go toward basic needs for kids, the foundation's lunch buddy program, and to a scholarship fund. A major art project at VSAA moves one step closer to completion. And as Helen Raptus shows us, they're building more than just artwork. It's kind of a big deal for us. On a hot September day, workers painstakingly put mosaic panels into place on the side of Vancouver School of Arts and Academics. The work moves at a snail's pace, but it's nothing compared to the nine years it's taken to get the project this far. I have to admit, I don't know that I'm quite of the, oh, it all happens for a reason, but there's been a lot of benefits, even though it, it was not a journey I would have ever foreseen. It's a pretty incredible piece of art. The panels are part of the Confluence Project, a public art effort that celebrates the Columbia River as a place where cultures have gathered for centuries. All along the river, from Idaho to the Pacific, local artists made statues, memorials, mosaics, and other art. Finally, VSAA is halfway done with its contribution. You know, we'll pause briefly with it half done and woohoo, and then um, we're going to jump into building the next set of panels. Three of the planned six panels are now up. Part of the reason the project has taken so long is that the panels had to be removable from the building. The project got over the hump with major contributions from community businesses and volunteers. Community-based projects, I think, take time to do well, but I think they're much more amazing and enriching when you collaborate with the community and create something together. The collaboration doesn't end there. Students and staff designed and built the panels as a team. That's exactly the spirit of togetherness that the Confluence Project celebrates. It kind of puts us all together as a community and we as a school, it's really important for us to be together. I feel like I've done something, a small thing, but that's part of a bigger thing for my school that's going to probably be there for a really long time and that feels really important to me. For In the Know, I'm Helen Raptus.
VSAA hopes to begin the next phase of the project in November and to have the final three panels up by this time next year. The backside of VSA also got an update. Thanks to the efforts of parents, the courtyard in the back of the school got a makeover. In a month-long project, landscaping crews added small rolling hills to the grassy areas and a raised performance platform. They also improved the Peace Garden, which runs along the building. The PTSA raised $65,000 to pay for the renovation. The Skyview Drama Club is gearing up for its fall production and it's really challenging itself. The club is putting on a stage version of the classic novel To Kill a Mockingbird. It's the story of racism and a man falsely accused of a horrible crime in the Old South. We caught up with the actors early in the rehearsal process. To enhance the audience experience, the club is building a set that replicates the South in the school lobby, complete with picket fences and a tire swing hanging from a tree. It's going to try to get them in the mindset as soon as they walk in the door so when they come in into this other big huge scenery they'll know exactly what they're supposed to feel like. The drama club teamed up with the school's artists who will show original artwork. They're even cooking up southern food one night. It's all part of the drama club's expanding efforts to engage the school. Theater is hard and people should do it. Even if you're stage fright you can always work backstage or uh, to help out with set building and such, because we don't need just actors, we need people behind the set as well. To Kill a Mockingbird runs November 1st, 2nd, and 3rd at 7 p.m. in the school's auditorium. That's just about it for us. Remember that you can see past episodes of In the Know on the district's YouTube page. That's youtube.com slash vanSDTV. I'm Chad Young. I'll see you next time on In the Know.